terms are not in huh. regular American's vernacular. So do change a couple of things that you're going to say. For example, yeah, I, d I don't know what she was talking about there. So, <laughs> so we're gonna be checking out this video here by Diane Jennings. If you're unfamiliar with her channel, she's an Irish person, and she does a lot of uh, videos. Some of them are reactions. Some of them are just her sitting there talking about whatever, right? Uh, differences between Ireland and America and whatnot. So this video I seen is ten things an Irish person noticed not to do in America. So obviously, <clears throat> I'm in America. I'm in the United States of America as we speak, never left the country. So um, there is a link to the video in the description section for her video. If you want to check that out, hit like and do all that stuff. But anyways, this is going to be interesting for me being an American because I don't know if she's been to America. I think she has. I'm pretty sure she has. But she definitely watches a lot of the videos um, about America and stuff. So... How am I going to, you know, is this stuff that like I'm going to agree with or is it a misconception she has? Who knows? Let's check it out. Yeah, I thought it would be fun if we looked at 10 things you really should not do if you go to America. I really don't like when people do that. This is stuff I've picked up along the way and some of it might seem basic to you, but it sure came as a surprise to me. There's always people who watch these videos and go, that doesn't apply to me. It's a generalization. So, exactly. Do be sure to. Yeah, exactly. With the generalization, like a lot of people think, you know, Americans with cowboy hats and stuff. Well, that would be mostly like Texas or like Arkansas, whatever, right? Or like you know, f farmers, ranchers might wear a cowboy hat. It's not something that everyday average person would wear, but it's a misconception, of course, right? Subscribe, otherwise Chewy will think you don't like him. Oh, that's sad. You better subscribe. Coming in at number 10, it's something that you've probably heard a lot, but maybe you've never heard it at all, because my mom said it was the first time she heard it, and then I had to question, do you even watch this channel, Denise? Hi, mommy, love you. It's factoring in surprise paying for things, including tipping and taxes, and I'm also gonna throw parking in there. Parking is yeah. actually really expensive in America. But yes, when you go to pay for something in America, the VAT, which we have in Europe, is not included in the sales price, and they call it sales tax. So you might go to buy a top that's $10, and when you go to pay for it, it's actually $10.60. It depends on the state, but the sales tax is different everywhere. Yeah, exactly. In the state of Indiana, which is where I currently reside, it's actually where I've lived my whole life for the most part, 7%. Um, so you spend $100, you're spending an extra $7 in sales tax on top of the price. And this is so normal in America that it can be unusual for Americans to see us struggle with the concept. Okay, how are you not getting this? But things are more expensive than you think they're going to be, so just be aware of that. Yeah. Also, tip it's, it's, it's trickery is what it is. And then they use the nine ninety nine because that sounds better than like $10 or something, I guess, because it's a smaller number. I, I don't know. As most of you guys know, tipping is something I've struggled with for sure. And you have to tip in America if you're getting like food off somebody. You know, you don't have to, but it's like, it's not, it's, it's not like a, a necessity, but it's, it's supposed to be optional, but it's so much forced that it's basically necessity but it's not right everybody will like judge you if you don't tip so you do want to i guess but it's like i don't know it's a whole thing i uh... let's continue sir tipping is customary not in fast food places this is where the no yeah. comes in but yes you have to tip a waiter or waitress or you have to tip somebody who does your nails basically somebody who performs a service for you because as i understand it they're not paid very much at all and rely on your tips it's a very unusual system for a european to understand but it is what it is so if you're and and thinking about it as an american it is also an unusual system you know the more videos you watch about europe and like learning about the rest of the world the more you realize it's weird here visiting there just get on the good ship tip oh i like that very much the next thing you need to not forget to do is bring your id everywhere and this is the case even if you're 50 years of age because i've seen old people I mean, get asked for their ids so i don't see it i mean it depends on what you're doing if you're going to go try to buy cigarettes or alcohol or something like that then of course you're going to need your id if you're driving a vehicle you need it you know you need your driver's license to obviously prove your identification if you get pulled over but i don't know why you would need to carry it all the time but we'll see what she has to say 
basically what you guys have explained to me is that the people who sell you alcohol are liable to be prosecuted if you're under the age of 20. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, is way too old. It should be 18. Just my thoughts. Well, nobody asked you. Ellen. So everywhere asks you for ID, even if you look over the age of 21, because they're all just, oh, they don't want to get... Yeah, and that's the thing. You could be 40. You could look like you're 40, clearly. And 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 depends on who it is, because it's their job. Like, they'll have to ID you. And sometimes it's even people that don't ID you normally, but it'll be like, because their boss is around or something. And then because of that, then they have to ID you, and it'll be like a day that you didn't bring your ID. So then it's like, but you're like, but the last three times you didn't ID, you ID me, you know how old I am. Like you can tell I'm 40. But then it's like, because it's their job or whatever. So they don't get in trouble. They have to by law. And it's it's a whole, it's a mess. It's a whole mess. Get put in jail and stuff. Or actually, it's probably have to pay a fine. That's probably worse. A couple of days in the slammer, you can handle it. Am I right? Don't ask <laughs> me to pay a hundred dollars unnecessarily. I don't actually know it's a hundred dollars but I gotta imagine it's steep. So you have to bring your passport or your driving license or whatever around with you, which is a little bit of safety concern, but you just have to do that over there. The next one is a little bit, it's a bit, oh. I didn't think I'd ever talk about this on a public forum, but it's just something you need to know. And maybe it applies more to the lady viewers than the male viewers. Brace yourself. In America, their loos have really high water like the water comes up really high in the loo also in a lot of public restrooms they are not well they're less than they're not so much sterile a lot of times in america you go you try to avoid the public restrooms that's what i try to do um i absolutely by no means will will shit in one at all unless it's an absolute emergency and then what you do is you take toilet paper and you Put it on the seat so you're not physically touching it. A little bit on top of the water so you don't get that splash back. In a pinch, in emergency, it'll work. I know it's wasteful, but whatever. It's better than getting that on you. And, and the water level is pretty high in the loo, I guess, is, is you know, she's talking about a toilet, obviously. Um, compared to Europe, I guess Europe's the toilets are, are different. But, you, you know, you just put like just like a, a sheet or two of toilet paper on the top of the water. Prevents the splashback. Pro tip. <laughs> Subscribe for that one, guys. Come on. I need more subscribers, so get down there. I don't know what you're waiting for. They're not so much sterile a lot of times. No, they're In America, gross. you're going to need to learn to hover above the loose seat rather than make contact with it with your arm. And there's yep. a couple of reasons for this, because it could be gross to sit on. And also it because is. a lot of times the lavatories in America automatically flush. So you're sitting on it and unbeknownst to you, you get a little, a little bidet. Oh my! And that water... It, you know, it can happen. Mostly it's like if you were to lean forward, because it's got like a sensor on it. So if you move, like if you lean forward for whatever reason, um, it thinks that you're getting up, I guess, because the sensor. And that can happen. It's, it's It has in the past. Uh... Another reason you just avoid at all costs. Avoid. Hold it till you get home. It may not be good for your body, but you know. I don't know. That's what works. Or <laughs> splashes right up because it's only like a couple of inches from the surface. So don't sit on the seat. Moving along, I suggest you don't tease anybody you don't know very well. American people are some of the nicest people in the world. They are so friendly and it, it depends on who it is, and you can kind of tell if somebody's going to have good humor about them, and depends on the humor that, you, you know, it, it depends. I mean, just to fill out the situation, right? Really, really welcoming, and when you get to know American people, you'll find that they're just some of the nicest people in the whole entire world. Yeah, you already said that. However, Sometimes. there is a lot more people in America, and therefore a lot more people who get very quickly and easily offended by things. So the Irish culture of slagging people off, aka teasing them to kind of establish your boundaries with them, is not so much a go-to when it comes to American people. You can definitely slag okay. off your friends who are American, or the people you've gotten to know better, but there's also a possibility in America that people will be offended by things, if they are that way inclined. Some people in America are very sensitive. Some people everywhere are. America's just bigger, so there's more of them. People are strange creatures. I found when I get to know an American, it's fine to say something sarcastic and they know I'm joking because they know what I'm like. Of course. But if it's somebody I don't know, they won't necessarily pick up on the fact that I'm joking right away. And I think that's to do 
with accent and yeah. demeanor and just all these tiny micro things that go on when you're talking to somebody new. So yeah. It's going to be like cultural differences and stuff. You know, some people don't pick up on it, I guess would be offended. But like, again, you know, you can kind of tell who's good to be good, good to joke with and who's not and stuff. When you first meet somebody, maybe don't use too much dry humor or slag off their hairstyle or whatever. Just wait to get to know them. It's probably fine. But there's also a tiny chance that you're going to get your head kicked in. So don't do that. <laughs> and we don't want that to happen, do we? The next thing, building on my point with the last one, is do not be shy. American people are super friendly and they're inclined to talk to you when you're in a queue or when you're just out and about. And this is one of my favorite things about American people. They'll just start talking to you out of nowhere. Don't be surprised if they want to know what you're up to, how your trip is going, stuff like that. That's just <clears throat> how the American people converse. But again, it's also not everybody. Some people have social anxiety. Some people are introverts. Some people just don't care for the small talk chatter. So, uh, but I, I guess the general majority of Americans are like that. You know, it's just to try to be friendly, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why we're like that. Everybody else is like that. So that's just how you are, right? I mean, that's how every country and culture is different, you know, because just like if somebody was adopted from here, took to Europe and then they were raised there, they wouldn't automatically act like a, an American because they're born here, right? They would adopt the, the European ways because that's what you're around and what you're used to and that would rub, rub off on you and you would act European. Also, don't take it too personally. They don't necessarily want to be your best friend. They're just being pleasant, just having a nice day and hoping right. that you have a nice day too. Have a nice day. <laughs> the next one seems obvious when you've been to America, but when I hadn't been to America, I definitely didn't know this so much. Don't assume everything is close enough to get around in a quick space of time. Don't no, it's huge. It's massive. And all the towns are even far away. Unless, I mean, if you're on the East Coast, everything kind of merges together in like a giant super city kind of thing. It's all like, you know, all city. Haven't been there, but I've seen videos. Of course, I heard about it, right? Farther out west you go, the farther spread out things are. Where I'm at, Indiana, um, you know, you got like a town here and then you got to drive like 10 minutes, 20 minutes to the next town. Any direction, you know, maybe you got to drive a half an hour to get to the next place. So, so even the towns are, are spread out. Um, everything in between is farmland, you know, cornfields, cow fields, whatever, right? Uh, woods etc etc don't underestimate how mahusive america is you cannot just get around fast if you go to one state you mightn't even get to see the whole state pretty much right. everywhere i've gone so far on trips to america is places i'm gonna have to go back to because i did not get to see the whole of the places most states are like little countries and driving from one end to another is a lot like yeah and the state of indiana is um over twice the size of the country of the netherlands actually so so yeah, each state is definitely like a, a, a the same as the size wise of being a different country in Europe, I guess, you know. They're actually bigger than my whole country. You could drive from one side of Ireland to the other side of Ireland in a day. No hassle. But not so in American states. The next thing is don't expect most American people to know anything about your country. Now regular viewers of this channel are gonna be pretty educated about a lot of stuff about Ireland. You're the best. But the layman won't necessarily know diddly anything about Ireland. A lot of people assume it's in Britain. Some people think we're at war. Some people think we don't mostly talk English here. I actually don't know much about Ireland at all. So maybe that's something I need to check into soon. I kind of like Ireland, like the, you know, you got leprechauns, the clovers, like uh, the meadows, like everything Irish is just great. I don't know anything about it though. Apparently you don't. And some people have never even heard of Ireland. That's a legitimate thing. They definitely don't know about the intricacies of the history or the politics or anything like that. So just don't get mad at people for not knowing stuff. Because of pop culture, TV, films and stuff like that, we're all pretty up on our awareness of what's going on in America and current affairs. The apocalypse is nigh. What has gone on historically. But Americans, because America is so big, spend a lot of time preoccupied by America. And the majority of Americans never even leave their country because they don't really need to because they have everything there. You should... And a lot of Americans never even left their state. And even further, there's Americans that's never even left a city that they're in, like people that live in New York or Los Angeles. Uh, some of them never left that city. Still travel. I mean, it's good fun to travel. So, you know, get your passport. But my point is don't get upset if somebody said something incorrect to you. Take that opportunity to 
gently educate them maybe, or just nod and smile if you're not arsed. <laughs> this leads on to my next point, just because you speak English, don't necessarily use terms that you'd use in your own country. Alter your language. So for example, okay. in Ireland and probably throughout most of Europe, we're really familiar with colloquialisms that American people have. What up dog? Get down with your bad self. Bless your heart. <laughs> but most Americans, and again, I'm not referring to the extremely educated section who watch this channel on a regular basis. Have it's because of Hollywood and the Americanized globalism that, you know, the American influence on the world, right? That's why a lot of people are definitely familiar with all that, you know, Hollywood movies mostly, I would think. Uh, but yeah, we don't know anything about the Irish slang. I'm about to find out something, though, I guess. No idea about European or Irish slang terms. Nope. They won't know what up the duff means. Never heard of a yo- Up the duff. What's that mean, like up your, up the ass or something, right? Isn't Duff like the backside? I don't even know. I'm just speculating. I'm probably way wrong. Looking up are very clean what? terms on a regular basis. Have no idea about European or Irish slang terms. They won't know what up the duff means. Never heard of a yoki mabob. Are very confused when you say, oh, that's gas. Do you? And that's because they just haven't been exposed to it. It's not usually on their TV unless they're watching something specifically about Ireland or Irish. Our terms are not in huh. regular American's vernacular. So do change a couple of things that you're going to say. For example... Yeah, I, d I don't know what she was talking about there. So <laughs> definitely try to, to not do that. Like if you're coming here, like something that's going to be more localized to, you know, use your Hollywoodized... Americanized version of of English, right? Like, you know, you don't have to 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 be like, "What's up, dog?" or whatever, you know. Like she was saying, but uh, don't do the Irish or the European slang, and we're all going to be confused, right? If I'm asking for a sandwich without tomatoes, I know that you guys say tomatoes, so I'll just say tomato. It just speeds up things. And yeah. finally, the number one thing not to do in America is don't invade people's personal bubble. This oh, one yeah. makes me feel like I might be a little bit American. I think that's with everybody, though. Isn't that everybody? I you, you, I would think. And maybe that's what she's saying, where she's like, well, this is making me think that maybe I'm part American. Because she don't like that either. But it's just a personal human thing. People like their space. In sentiment. So not so much. This one makes me feel like I might be a little bit American in sentiment. So not so much in Ireland, maybe to a degree, but more so in other parts of Europe, people are predisposed to going into each other's spaces. They do kissy cheeks, they'll brush past you in the shops, they'll come right up. There's a lot of face touching. People yeah, can't tactile. But not so in America, where the PDA is kind of frowned upon. Get a room. Americans and me have a little bubble of space around themselves, which they're like, don't come into this unless I know you. This is. I am contained within my bubble, okay? <laughs> don't get up in my. Don't be in my business. <laughs> my zone of comfort. Perhaps yes. it has something to do with the gigantism of the country. Again, I don't know. people are not so familiar with other people and they don't like them to come into their zone of personal space. Now, if you're in a crowd, obviously, you know, you're shoulder to shoulder, you know, you're, you're trying to get through a crowd. There's lots of people. That's obvious. But if there's room around, there's no reason to be in here. If it's packed and that's your only options, then clearly that's, that's, that's fine. But for absolutely no reason in a wide open room and you're like within my zone, I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> don't touch people you don't know in America because they might shoot you. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I, I mean, the wrong person might. I don't know. Depends on where you are, right? Might be a factor in like when those Black Friday crazy sales went on. You guys are so not used to touching each other and bustling and stuff. That <laughs> it, just, it just set off everybody's triggering this. That's just a theory. But that's it for today's list. Do let it's me know theory. in the comments anything you think I missed. I can actually think of loads just sitting here now. Let's start over. No, we'll do another list. <laughs> no, we'll do another list. All right. Yeah. So that's great. Um, most of that's pretty spot on, actually. So good observations. If there's anything else, definitely drop them down below. And uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Help me get to that 100,000 subscriber goal. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people are watching this that's not subscribed. I see it in the graphs. I have the analytics. So you know who you're talking about. You know who I'm talking to. 
You hit subscribe. You guys have a super fun, awesome day. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye.